All right, you beautiful humans. I have been known to share a viewpoint that many don't necessarily want to hear, but many of you probably do need to hear. However, your thoughts are always welcome here on YouTube and hit me up over on Twitter. But with WWDC just days away and the latest iPad Pro reviews hitting your feeds like there's really nothing else going on in the world, I personally can't really recall when a developer's conference carried so much hope, not only for the new hardware, which, you know, it actually has happened in the past, I will admit, but there's also this last minute holdout that will finally get asked to the dance, like finally this time, when iPad OS 15 arrives and it'll be everything that we dreamed of. Although if history actually continues to repeat itself, there will certainly be a mention of iPad OS 15, but really only decide to finally grace our doorstep sometime later this summer or potentially even in the fall with our newly <laughs> decked out iPad Pros when we all end up finally feeling like suckers for not dating other devices if all we really wanted is just some give and take with our workflow rather than having to upend the way that we work. Now, what I am really getting at here is that this buildup is often fueled by one rumor after another, and we keep hitting that button to get that dopamine hit. But how about we actually just put things into perspective here about iPad OS? And first, as someone personally, I definitely took a few jabs at the iPad and its operating system, especially in the early days when it was very clunky and just, it was primarily a device for consuming. Although I do still, I admit that it is still very much a consumption device. But let's actually give some credit to those that have really evolved their workflow over the years and discovered that iPad can be a primary like day-to-day -day tool. Now, of course, when it does come to the development of the software, you do look at uh, what is needed from a business to consumer standpoint, as well as a business to business relationship. Now, of course, I'll admit, I am with many of you out there that wants more out of this operating system, especially since we have the most capable chipset that can handle just about anything that you have to throw at it. And when you and I actually think about the operating system, we think about the capability of a full suite of offerings that you would find on any desktop or a laptop device that allows for almost endless multitasking, easy copy and paste functionality, and you know the software or app doesn't randomly refresh when you're not using it. Not to mention the fact that as simple as it is with Mac OS, PDF preview is awesome and very much needed on the iPad. And I do think that these refinements are coming. And of course, looking at my son's generation, I do see this though. Every time that they jump on a computer, it's as if they have to retrain the way that they actually work because this is a generation that has been raised on hand-me-down phones and tablets and school systems that utilize these devices almost entirely. Whether you agree or not, this is actually where we are. And when I actually step out of this role as a parent and start thinking like a business, this is a generation that has me very much intrigued. And you might say or have personally said that this generation is still so young and barely has a dime to their names and they're not the ones actually buying. But my response is that they have the influence of the adults in their lives that are making those buying decisions and they will soon be stepping into the workforce and also influencing those decisions as well. And whether you're that person that is slowly dying inside saying, but this is actually how we do things around here. It may just be time to embrace this evolution and accept the fact that the iPad along with the operating system is basically an experiment of really what's to come. And of course, the biggest hurdle that I see right now is fracturing the current lineup because the iPad Pro and the iPad um, Air Gen 4, which I have both, are definitely capable of running Pro apps. And when you have this M1 chip that can manage desktop class demands, and then an entire lineup or models that are previous to this and just even the regular iPad, they might not fare so well. So where does it land for the developers and are they gonna be able to have a structure with these apps that's gonna allow for that ebb and flow with the hardware? And of course, personally, I am just glad that I am not the one personally trying to scale this. And of course, I am obviously so comfortable with the fact that I could be really wrong that I still posted this video because I actually embrace this point of view because I, and, and I do, I really welcome your input as well because I think this should be a dialogue. But of course, speaking of the possible hardware announcements, I am also very comfortable with the fact that I could be really wrong on this one too. And let's actually hope that I am. Because if we can make sense of all of these rumors about the updated 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros being announced at WWDC. And I'll also give mention about that sweet looking Mac mini render as well, because this really is a reminder of my first Mac mini from 2009, which 
it definitely lived up to its intended purpose as an entry into the world of Mac OS. And of course, for the record, I, I have stated on this channel that I did not believe that WWDC was going to be about announcing hardware. For those that are still waiting to actually take your at bat for whatever it is that you're trying to create or get done, I keep saying that the M1 is plenty powerful to knock it over the fence. But it does actually seem that these rumors are continuing to be on steroids when it comes to WWDC and the announcement of the redesigned MacBook Pros with the M1X chip that apparently per Mark Gurman, who is now becoming one of the most ubiquitous uh, individuals out there among the tech community, and I know certainly that my family really loves these dinner conversations about Mark Gurman, but these rumors have indicated that we should expect a 10-core CPU with two of those cores being efficiency cores and the other eight that are strictly performance cores. And of course, then the GPU having anywhere from 16 to 32 graphics cores, depending on the spec that you're really after. And this is actually certainly a, a jump up from that four and four that's that, that split on the current M1 CPU. And whether you think that this is impressive or not, here's the thing, I am actually still testing Sony FX6 and FX9 footage on the M1 MacBook Air. And for those that don't know, these are actually cinema cameras. And that's without the 16 or 32 uh, graphics cores that are rumored to be on the M1X chip. I've even tested, if you didn't see the video, I've tested this on the M1 iPad Pro. Now, of course, pivoting back, bringing ourselves down here, that I have previously stated that the 14-inch MacBook Pro could be starting at $1799 US. Like, that would be the starting price point. But the bigger question is, is whether this will remain an entry-level price point, and then would that mean that 8 gigs of RAM is part of that entry level, especially because overall, the M1X chip, like these chipsets are supposed to be more powerful, and then there are also going to be other features to trade off that, that point that uh, it won't start off at 16 gigs of RAM. I really hope I'm wrong on this. But something else that we really need to, to really look at and can't seem to nail down is whether the mini LED, whether that's actually going to be on these current or very near future MacBook Pros. Because maybe we need to get, and I say we, but Apple needs to get a better handle on that technology and then maybe even be able to get that technology in our hands. Because another really big hang up here is with our wallets. And if Apple is really sticking uh, within the ballpark of their pricing structure, that 16 inch MacBook Pro is landing at around $23.99, but it does offer that 16 gigs of RAM. And then this actually starts to make sense when we really look at that 14 inch MacBook Pro and there's a little bit of spillover. And then also too, thinking about the iPad Pro price jump with these uh, new displays and of course the same M1 chip. But here's the thing, as I said in another video, when we were personally building out 13 inch MacBook Pros that started at 1799 US, just, just as a starting point, we were getting closer to that price of the 16 inch MacBook Pro when we were trying to bump up the CPU, which then caused a whole other level of buying confusion and really just pushed many of us in the community to really consider the 16 inch and then we built that out and then ended up spending several thousand dollars more uh, depending on, you know, like collectively, not just, just per device, but a lot more money because really who wants the base model? Am I right? So this actually leads me into that buying decision of what you need for your current and very foreseeable workflow. And I know that this is a ridiculous comparison, but be careful when you are purchasing that Ferrari and all you're gonna do is keep it in the garage. It is an expensive piece of hardware that if you're if you're only gonna take it uh, to the end of the driveway and back, I mean, really take that in consideration. But I do think that we will get those cup holders back in the form of the SD card slot and a couple more ports, and it will end up in that chassis. And that's, I think, where the touch bar is going to pretty much disappear because that tech and, and that R&D will be better spent, spent on the display and other features that are to come. So even being wrong about the WWDC announcement, if that is the case, if these new M1 MacBook Pros, uh, if they're announced, if it's the MacBook Pros or just the M1X chip is announced, then when are we actually going to be able to get our hands on these machines? Because we continue to have manufacturing delays throughout, and there are plenty of you that are still waiting on your 24 inch iMac or your iPad Pro that really went on pre-order like a while ago. 
So would Apple announce this so early that the M1X may not even be able to hit the market until later this summer or early fall, which would then run the risk of really hurting the current M1 Mac sales because, you know, an M1 is basically the equivalent of a Core i3 MacBook Air. I mean, right? And so if by chance mini LED isn't coming to the updated MacBook Pros or some limited version of it or the RAM or the specs you're hoping for at the price that you're hoping for, or at least your wallet wants to be aligned with, even if there are more ports, however, then really just look at it. What is your next move? What is your threshold? I mean, I really would love to know because really think about it for what it is and take notes on what it would take for you to make the purchase once those are announced. Write down what makes sense for you and what would be a flat out deal breaker for you, even if another bell or whistle is added that sounds awesome, but it really doesn't apply to your, your needs. And on that note, we are not promised tomorrow, so get what you need, appreciate what you have, and go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces, and hey, if you're still around, then I'll catch you right back here on the next one.